Are you a .NET developer looking for a reliable and efficient way to send emails from your web applications? Whether it's for user signups, order confirmations, or even just a friendly newsletter. Here is Amazon SES, a powerful yet cost-effective way to handle emails in .NET applications. In this video, I'll walk you through everything you need to know to get started with Amazon SES, also known as a simple email service, from setting it up to sending emails the right way from your .NET applications. Watch this video entirely to learn about all the various ways to send emails using SES. Hey everyone, this is Mukesh. In this channel, I take complex concepts and try to turn them into simple, actionable tutorials for .NET developers. So if that sounds like your thing, hit subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. It really helps the channel to grow and reach more .NET developers like you. Today's video is sponsored by AWS and I've got something special for you. A $25 AWS credit, huge thanks to AWS for helping me produce more AWS content for the .NET community. This video is part of my ongoing .NET on AWS series where I guide you through building and deploying .NET applications using a range of AWS services. Whether it's hosting web applications, managing databases, implementing CI-CD pipelines, or ensuring scalability, this series provides practical insights to help you effectively run .NET workloads on AWS. If you're interested, be sure to follow this YouTube playlist and explore even more in-depth articles on my blog. Let's get started. Let's first try to understand what exactly Amazon SES is and how it can help us. So imagine you're running a web application and for some business reasons, it needs to send emails, like a lot of them. Maybe it's order confirmations, password resets, or even marketing campaigns. At first you might think, okay, I'll just set up my own email server. But soon the reality will kick in. Configuring email servers, managing deliverability, handling spam complaints, everything is a nightmare. So this is exactly where Amazon simple email service comes into the picture. It's a powerful, scalable, and cost-effective solution that can take care of all the complexities of sending and receiving emails so that you can focus on what truly matters, that is building your application. With SES, you don't have to worry about the email infrastructure. It provides high deliverability, built-in security features, and some seamless integration with AWS services. Whether you're sending transactional emails or large-scale campaigns, SES ensures that your email land where they should, that is right in the user's inboxes. In this video, we'll dive into how Amazon SES works, why it's a game changer for developers like us, and how you can leverage it to supercharge your application's email sending capabilities. Let's see how Amazon SES works. Amazon Simple Email Service is a cloud-based email solution that enables you to send transactional emails, marketing, and notification emails at scale. So when you send an email using SES, your application would ideally be submitting a request through the AWS SDK for .NET or whatever programming language you're using, or the SMTP interface, or even via the AWS Management Console. We'll see all these various ways further down in this video. So once a request is received, SES would process it and prepare it for delivery to the recipient. But you'll have to keep in mind that before SES can send the emails on your behalf, it requires verification of your domain or email address to ensure authenticity and to prevent spam. Once the verification is completed, SES allows you to send emails from the verified sources. You'll also have to note that after an email request is submitted and verified, SES can process the email by applying the configured settings such as headers, templates, and tracking options. It then connects with the recipient's email provider such as Gmail or Outlook or whatever it be to deliver the email securely and efficiently. This way, SES ensures compliance with email best practices and improves deliverability by managing factors like email throttling and content scanning. Once an email is sent out, SES can also provide real-time tracking and feedback. It monitors key metrics such as successful deliveries, bounce backs, and complaints. If an email fails to deliver due to invalid address or any other issue, SES can mark it as a bounce and you can notify via Amazon SNS. Similarly, if any recipient marks your emails as spam, SES tracks it as a complaint and updates suppression lists to maintain your sender reputation. By using Amazon SES, you get a reliable, scalable, and cost-effective solution for sending emails without having to manage complex email infrastructure or worry about deliverability challenges. Now coming to the pricing part, Amazon SES offers a flexible free plan as part of the AWS free tier, making it very easy to explore its email features without any initial cost. So if you're just getting started, you can send or receive up to 3000 emails per month completely for free for the first 12 months. And the best part? This free tier covers both outgoing and incoming emails. So once you exceed this free tier limits, Amazon SES follows a simple pay-as-you-go pricing model. For the outbound emails, you'll be charged $0.1 for every 1000 emails. And if your emails include attachments, there is an additional charge of $0.12 per gigabyte of attachment data. 
On the other hand, for inbound emails as well, SCS charges $0.1 per thousand emails received along with a small nominal fees of $0.09 per thousand chunks of incoming email data. To get more accurate and up-to-date details, you can always check the official Amazon SCS pricing page. With this flexible pricing model, Amazon SCS lets you scale your email operations efficiently, paying only for what you use. Whether you're a startup or an enterprise, it's a cost-efficient way to manage your email communication. As always, here are the prerequisites before getting started with this video. You will need an AWS account. Even a free tier account would do. You can grab the free account from here. Also, you need Visual Studio IDE with AWS Toolkit extensions installed. The AWS CLI profile should be configured to authenticate your .NET application into AWS. You can follow this video to get your AWS CLI profile configured and ready to go. You also need .NET 8 SDK installed and also have a spare email address. We'll need this email ID to register into Amazon SES. Amazon will later use this email ID as a sender. There are a bunch of ways for sending emails using Amazon SES. They are as follows. You can use the AWS Management Console for sending emails. This is usually used during testing the emails. You can also use the AWS CLI command lines and JSON payloads to send your actual email. The most recommended way is to use the SMTP interface, which we'll be seeing later in this video, where we'll be actually building a .NET application with the SMTP interface. And finally, you can also use the AWS SDK for .NET or let it be any other programming language. Let's check out the first two ways for now via AWS Management Console and using AWS CLI. The remaining two options we'll explore once we start building our ASP.NET Core Web API. Let's log into our AWS Management Console and open up Amazon SES. Let me search for SES and open up Simple Email Service. So this is what it would look like when you're opening it up for the first time. To start sending mails, we'll have to first create a new sender identity using an already existing email ID. And then we'll have to verify it as well. Post verification, we'll be able to send out emails using Amazon SES. So an identity can be a domain, an email address or a subdomain that will be used to send emails through Amazon SES. Let's click on get started and click on create identity. For this demonstration, I'll be using my spare email ID to verify the identity in Amazon SES. Note that once you register an email address here, a verification mail will be sent to that particular email ID to confirm the identity. So ensure that the mailbox is accessible. Let me select email address and type in my spare email. and click on create identity. As you can see, to verify ownership of this identity, you'll have to check your inbox for a verification request and you'll have to confirm the particular link. So let me switch back to the mailbox and this is the email that I have received with the verification request. Let's click on the link and we have our email ID verified. Let me now go back to AWS Management Console and refresh this page. Here, you'll be able to see that the mail ID is now in the verified status. So now that we have verified and registered our identity, let's send a simple test email using the AWS Management Console. The Amazon SES Mailbox Simulator lets you test how your application would handle different email sending scenarios. Let's click on Send Test Mail. I'll keep the email format as formatted and the from address will be the same as what I have registered in the identity. And from the scenario, I'll be selecting Custom. And from the Custom recipient, I will send the mail to myself. I will add a simple subject hello from SES and a body that says hello. Once that is done, you can just send the test mail. I will log in back to my mailbox. You'll be able to see that we have received the mail as we sent from the AWS Management Console. Apart from this, we'll also be able to send emails using the AWS CLI. For this, you will need to have AWS CLI installed on your machine, which I believe you already have installed. If not, you can simply search for AWS CLI on Google and get it installed. So once that is installed, make sure that you have the CLI profile also configured. You can watch this video to configure your AWS CLI profiles. So this ensures that you'll be able to authenticate into your AWS account for consuming its services. Once that all is done, let's open up our terminal and paste in the following command, which says AWS SES send email and the parameters are from, to and text and subject. So on the from, I'm going to write in my spare email address, which will be the same as the two parameters as well. And on the text, I'll write, hello world, how are you? And subject as hello. So once that is done, just click on send and you'll get back a message ID. Now let me go back to my mailbox and check if I have received the mail. And here is a mail that we received. So if you want to dive deep into the CLI commands, you can refer to this page, which will be part of my blog and this video description as well. So these are the two ways to send emails using Amazon SES. 
Next up, let's learn about sending emails from an ASP.NET Core application using Amazon SES. We will be building a simple ASP.NET Core Web API that will be able to send emails using Amazon SES. We'll have two approaches to this. So we'll be either sending the mail via the SMTP client, which is a more recommended version. And also we'll be using the AWS SDK package to achieve the same thing. First up, open up Visual Studio. I already have a solution open. That is a .NET 8 Web API. First up, we'll build a traditional SMTP mail service that will accept a set of credentials like SMTP username, password, port number, and server address and attempt to send emails using the mail kit package for .NET. Let's first generate the required credentials and keep them ready. For this, switch back to AWS Management Console and go to Amazon SES. Here in the sidebar, let's go to SMTP settings. Keep note of this particular SMTP endpoint, we'll need it later. So once you're done, let's hit on create SMTP credentials. So this will be redirecting you to AWS IAM where a new user will be created for you. So I'm not going to change anything. Let's click create user. So once created, you'll be given a SMTP username and password. Let's download the CSV file. So I downloaded the CSV file and kept it for later use. With that done, let's switch back to Visual Studio IDE and install a couple of packages that I mentioned earlier, which are MailKit and MimeKit. So I'll copy the commands. I will open up package manager console and paste in the command. So the first package that we're going to use is the MailKit package followed by the MimeKit package. So once that is done, let's start creating our C-sharp objects. So let's add the models first. I'll create a new folder called models. And I'll add the first class, which is the mail request. So this is what we are expecting from the client. That will be the recipient email ID, the subject and the body. These are the parameters that the client will be sending to the API endpoint that we'll configure later. Now, after that, let me add one more class called mail options, which will technically be used for configuring the SMTP client. So this will hold parameters like host, port number, display name, mail, username, and the password. So these are certain configurations that we have already downloaded via our CSV file from AWS Management Console. Now with that done, let's go back to appsettings.json and paste in the credentials that we copied earlier. So here we have the host, which is the SMTP endpoint from Amazon SES. So this is what we have earlier seen in the SES dashboard. It'll be almost the same. And the port is always set to 589 and the display name can be anything. I have kept my name for now. And email ID is what we registered earlier in SES. Username and passwords. These are the credentials that we generated from Amazon SES using the IAM user. So once that is done, let's create one more folder called services, which will have the core logics to our application. So let me create a services folder and add in the first interface, which is the I email service. I email service, which will technically have only one task, which will be send email async, and it will accept a mail request body. Now let's start creating our implementations. The first implementation that we'll try is the SMTP email service. SMTP email service. And we will implement the I email service here. Let me implement the interface. And I'll copy over some code. First up, we are injecting the configuration from app settings to the constructor of this particular service. And within the send email async, we are creating an object of my message and adding all the required parameters, which is the from address to address, the subject, everything right from the mail request that is coming in. Also, we are also appending the body to this particular request. And once that is done, we'll create an SMTP client using the configurations that we received from app settings, which is the username and password. And we use this particular object to connect to the particular client and authenticate it. So once that is done, we'll be sending the email request. So this is a very standard way of sending emails within .NET. The best part is that you can easily integrate SES with this traditional method of sending emails within .NET. So once that is done, let's go to program.cs to register our services and the I options configuration. So I'll paste it here. So as you can see in the first line, we'll be configuring the mail options to read the section from the app settings, which is named as mail options. And then we'll register our service within the DI container. So where this is helpful is that a single interface could have multiple implementation. So as I already mentioned, I'm going to have two implementations of the same I email service. One is the SMTP email service, which has been already implemented. And the next one is going to be the SDK email service, which we'll see in the next section of this video. So the idea is that the implementation will be registered along with the interface by using a particular key. 
and at runtime it is pretty easy to fetch this particular key from the i service provider to resolve the required implementation now with that done let's also add the endpoint so i'll copy it here so this will be a post endpoint that is at the route of mail slash the type so by type i mean the type of provider that we are going to use for this implementation which could be either smtp or sdk and completely depends on the user request so in this particular minimal endpoint i'm going to inject i service provider and it will also be receiving type and request both from the client the first line is where we resolve the service so we are going to use the provide.get keyed service and pass in the type so if a client passes smtp it will automatically resolve to the smtp email service so once that is resolved i can simply use the particular implementation and send the request via the required service provider. So with that done, let's run the application. I have Swagger up and running, but for this demonstration, I'm going to use Postman. So let me switch back to Postman. I will change the port number to the current one. And as you can see here, as the key to this particular endpoint, I'm going to pass in SMTP, which will be resolving to SMTP email service within our application. And I'm also attaching a sample JSON payload to this particular endpoint. Let me click on send. So we're getting a status code of okay. Let's switch back to the mailbox to check if we have received the message. And there you go, everything is working as we expected. Now that we have learned about how to send emails from .NET using the SES via SMTP, let's now see how to do the same via the AWS SDK package for .NET. We'll be using the same project for demonstrating this as well. But first up, we'll have to install a couple of different packages. Let's switch back to Visual Studio. Open up Package Manager console. And install the AWS SDK as well as the simple email package. It's also important to note that my system is already configured using the AWS CLI profiles to authenticate into my AWS account. So if you're not very sure on how to do that, I have created that exact video in my .NET on AWS playlist, which you can find on my YouTube channel. So once that is done, under the service folder, I'm going to add a new implementation or a class that will be SDK email service. And you guessed it, right? It's going to implement the I email service. Let's implement the interface. I'll save it and I'll copy over the code. So first up, we are injecting the dependencies of I Amazon simple email service and the mail configuration into the constructor of this particular service. Then we'll create instances of body, subject, message, and destination using the data from the incoming API request. Finally, we create a send email request instance using these data to send out the email with the help of our AWS SDK or the I Amazon simple email service client. With that done, let's register our new services. For this, I'll switch back to program.cs. Let me copy over that as well. So here, first up, we are going to register the AWS options and also we'll have to register the I Amazon simple email service into the DI container. And the last part is where we are going to register the actual SDK implementation. So as you can see that we are still going to use the add key transient where we are going to mention the interface, which is I email service along with the implementation, which this time will be SDK email service along with the name of this particular key. So that will be SDK. So once that is done, let me save it and I'll run the application again. So once we have the application up and running, let me switch back to Postman. So the only change in this particular request is that you will have to change the SMTP to SDK to use the SDK implementation. And also I'll be changing this body to suggest that it is coming from the SDK implementation. So with that done, let me hit the send request. And you can see that we have a 200 OK. Let's go back to our mailbox. And here is a message that I received from the SDK. On the same note, you can also use the traditional way to add attachments to your email request. And that's a wrap for this video. Today we learned everything about sending emails from a .NET application using Amazon SES or also known as the simple email service. We explored this particular AWS service, its pricing, how it works, and also learned about the four ways to send emails using Amazon SES. So which approach would you recommend? I personally always use the SMTP approach as it's more standard and much easier to work with. You can find the entire source code of this particular implementation in my .NET on AWS series GitHub repository. Also for the text version of this video, here is the article link. In the next video, we'll learn about some CICD operations using GitHub Actions, where we will deploy our .NET application to AWS Elastic Container Service as part of the CICD workflow. So do not forget to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more awesome videos like this. Till next time, happy coding and thank you.